In this tutorial we're going to look at all of the functions within the Extrude and Weave tool and we'll be looking at all sorts of different results you can create using this powerful function. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the Extrude and Weave Guides project folder we're going to open Extrude Example. And so here you can see that I've got a set of simple vectors that we've created in the software and we're going to use these to demonstrate the Extrude and Weave tool. So let's just tile our windows like so. See the 2D view on the left and I can see the 3D view on the right hand side. Now to access the Extrude and Weave tool I need to come into the Modeling tab and we can find it in the Modeling tool's third icon which is this one here and if we go in there that will open up the Extrude and Weave form. So we're going to start with a simple example to begin with. Now when we create a shape using the Extrude tool we need to select one or more vectors that will represent our drive rails. In this case we're just going to look at selecting one which is going to be this S curve that we've got here. So I simply select it so it's highlighted and then we come over to the form and then we need to use this option here, use selection. And that's going to transform that vector into a drive rail. Now if we take a look at that rail, I can see the start point here represented by this green node and I can see that we've got arrows travelling through this rail. This is showing me the direction that the shape will flow along the rail. So now we need to choose an open vector that represents the cross section that will be extruded along this drive rail here. In this case I'm going to select this vector here and with that selected we can come back over into the form. We're just going to go some of the default settings that we've already got here and we will be talking about each one of these options throughout this tutorial. At the bottom here we choose how we want our component to combine with other components that we may already have. For instance we could choose to add that, subtract, merge, or we could choose the option to merge the lowest points. In this case we're just going to go with the add option. Then you have the option here to give that component a name. Now in this case we're just going to call this one extrude and then I could go ahead and press apply there. And so the software will create a shape based on the vectors that we had selected. You can see in the 2D view I have a yellow representation of that component. In the 3D view I can see the actual 3D component that we've created and I can see that cross section being extruded along the shape that we had here. And so if I wanted to I could just go ahead and close this form down can put that in Z and you'll see now I have a component called extrude in my component tree. If I select it you'll see it's selected. It's also selected the 2D grayscale of that in the 2D view and it's also selected the actual component that we can see there in the 3D view. If I wanted to I could right click here and I could use the option to delete that component. So let's go back into the extrude tool. So I'm going to select this S-curve again. With that selected, use the option here, use selection. Then I'm going to select the same cross-section again, except this time, rather than going to press apply here, I'm actually going to apply this cross-section directly onto the rail itself. So I'm just going to go over this node. You'll see I've got a check mark there, and when I click, you'll see it will apply that cross-section to the start and to the end points there. And so now we can go ahead and press apply. And you can see that the software creates the shape that we had before. And that's what the software does if we just use one single cross section. Now what we could do is we could look at adding in multiple cross sections or we could swap cross sections over. For example, if I wanted to swap the curve cross section on the right hand side of this rail, I could do that by simply selecting a new cross section, like so, and then coming over to this node here and just simply click in place. And you'll see now that we have a different cross section on the right hand side there. 
Let's see that we've got this yellow square or this yellow indicator here and that's just telling us that that matches up with this cross section here which also has a yellow indicator. So it's just a way for me to see which cross section is at which point. So we've got yellow here, yellow for this rectangular cross section there. And at the start we've got a red indicator here and that's representing our cross section here that also has a red indicator. So then what I could do is I could go ahead and apply that change there and we can see the result of that change here in the 3D view. Where we're starting with this curved profile and that curved profile is travelling through the rail and as it's travelling through it's transitioning into the rectangular profile on the right hand side which we can see there. So let's just put that back in Z and you'll also notice that our part actually gets wider compared to the start point and again that's all down to the actual shape of the cross sections that we're using so starting off with this shape here and as it transitions the width of the part gets wider to match that of the cross section that we've got here we could add in another cross section if we wanted to for example, I could take this cross section here and just simply add it anywhere I want along the rail. Just click in place and you'll see it's been added in there. You'll notice it's got a green indicator here and I can also see we have the green indicator of this angled shape here. So let's go ahead and press apply. And if we take a look at that we can see that what the software's done is took into account our cross sections from travelling through the rail here where we're starting off with the curved shape which is this one here and that's transitioning into that angled shape that we've got there and then it finally transitions into the rectangular shape of this cross section over here. We also have the ability to move cross sections whereby I can simply take it by its midpoint and just move it along the rail. Go ahead, press apply and then the software will just update that for me. I could also look at moving the ends of our part, so taking the cross section on the end and I could move that back. Go ahead, press apply and again the software is going to update that and create the shape based on the cross sections along that rail so it hasn't created anything here because we don't have a cross section on the end point there. I could bring that back simply by just pulling that back over there, press apply and it will just create that shape again. So not only do we have options within the form, we also have right click options to control the shape that we're creating. For example, I could hover over a node of a cross section, right click and you'll see I've got various options here to smooth, delete cross sections, add to all rail nodes. In this case I'm going to use the option here to delete cross section. Go ahead, press apply and you'll see that the software has updated that change where we deleted that cross section. So now we have the curved shape transitioning into that rectangular shape on the right hand side. Now if I right mouse click on the rail you'll see I'm presented with a different menu where I can reverse the rail, insert start point, remove all the cross sections. Let's have a look at reverse rail. So by selecting that option what it does it just reverses the direction of the rail. So now I can see my start point is over here and then we're traveling from right to left I can see the arrows are pointing to the left hand side and you'll see we finish off with the cross section that was originally over here on the right hand side. So let's look at applying this. Okay, So you'll see now we've applied it, you can see the curved shape starts on the right hand side and it's travelling through and transitioning into that rectangular cross section. So let's right click on the rail and reverse that back, so we're going to use reverse rail. See now start point is on the left and we're going from left to right, I can see the arrows pointing in that direction. Press apply and the software will update the 3D view there. 
So let's use this option here, clear rails. That's just going to remove the component and deselect the rail. So let's reselect that S curve. Use the option here, use selection. I'm going to apply cross section. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to apply it directly to the start point there just so we can see uh, those cross sections in the 2D view. Then we could go ahead and press apply. Now, not only do these red indicators indicate to us which cross section we are using, they also tell us which way the cross section is being hung. And so if we take a look at the indicator, you can see it's on the left hand side of our shape as if we were looking down the rail and if we take a look at our cross section we can see that that indicator is also on the left hand side and so this point is being attached to this point here and this side of our cross section is being attached to this point here and that's how we actually see that here in the 3D view. So those indicator points are just basically telling us how our cross section is being hung through the rail. Now if we right click on the rail and use the option to reverse the rail you'll see now that our drive rail is traveling from this point here going from right to left we can see those arrows traveling through that rail there you'll also notice that our indicators are now on the bottom here and so this point of our cross section is going to hang from this point here and this point of our cross section is going to hang on the left side of this rail here so when I go ahead now and press apply we should see that swap over we can see that reflected there in the 3D view. And so as we've reversed the direction of the curve, we've reversed the orientation of the cross section. So let's just right click there and use the option here to reverse the rail and we'll go ahead and press apply and you'll see it's just changed that over again. So now I'm just going to take this vector here now this cross section is a mirrored copy of the cross section that we currently have selected. I'm going to take that one and we're just going to replace the end cross section here with this new one. And now that I've applied that you can see that we have a yellow indicator here and we've got the yellow indicator for this cross section. Red one for this cross section here and we can see that red indicator there. So let's just go ahead and press apply there. Now if we look in the 3D view, we can see how our cross section transitions from this point to this point here. So we've got this cross section, we can see the red indicator here, that's been hung on this side of the rail here. We can see that through the component there, we've got the longer side of that angled shape on this point here and then as it travels through and meets the other side we can see how that cross section is being hung by looking at the yellow point here you can see it's hanging off this side here and so we see the shorter area of that cross section which is this peak here and then that slope that we've got in that vector comes down onto the bottom side over here and so that's why we're getting this peak transversing along the shape of this curve. And that's because we've got this option here, sweep between spans switched on. And so what the software's doing, it's sweeping between each cross section span. So here where we start on this side, we're looking at this span here on this cross section. As that travels round to the end, it's transitioning into this span on the second cross section. Now if we look at this part here, we're actually looking at this span here and as that travels through the rail we're transitioning into this span of the second cross section here. And the software can only do this if the cross sections have the same number of spans and we can clearly see here that these two cross sections both have two spans there. And so if we uncheck sweep between spans what will happen is the cross sections will transition through the rail linearly. 
So let's just turn that back on and then press apply there. Now as I said this will only work if your cross sections have the same number of spans. For example if I take this cross section here we can clearly see that there is three spans in this vector. If I select that and then apply that to our rail You'll notice that we're now presented with a number under each one of our cross sections that we currently have going through our rail. And these numbers represent the number of spans that we have in our cross sections. And so the software is basically telling us we've got three spans in this cross section, we've got two in this one, two in this one, there's no way that we can use this option sweep between spans because we've got a different number of spans in some of our cross sections. And so if we went ahead and pressed apply there, what would happen is that the software will just default to transition in the cross sections linearly through the part as if sweep between spans wasn't checked. So if you ever see any of these numbers appear when you're applying cross sections to the rail, then it will just ignore the fact that you've got sweep between spans checked and it will just create it as if this option wasn't available and would just default to transition in the cross sections linearly. Now if I wanted to change the shape of our rail or even change the shape of some of our cross sections I can do that without having to leave the extrude and waveform. So to do that I can simply click into the white space and then press N on the keyboard and that's going to activate node edit mode. And then what I could do is I could simply select the vector that I'd like to edit and then make the edits. Then I could just take this node, pull that up, I'm just going to turn off the smart snapping option, I don't need that in this case, pull that handle over like so, right click on this node, delete that point, I'm going to bring that over a little bit more, like that, pull this down, and then I could look at one of these cross sections, and if I just zoom in there, I'm just going to pull that mid node out and then just pull that down and use the option here zoom to fit and if we just click into the white space right click to come out of node edit mode and then we could use this option over here to reselect the rails and so that will remember the cross sections that we've used previously so let's go ahead and press apply and so you'll see in the 3D view here that we've got a discontinuity in the shape and that's because our cross section is too wide to go around that corner without it overlapping itself. And so you need to be aware of the shapes of your drive rails to ensure that your cross sections have enough room to fit. So let's just use this option over here to reset that shape and you'll see it's cleared that shape However, we still have access to our rail along with the cross sections. Now, if I wanted to use new rails, I could look at using this option here to clear the rails and that will just deselect everything there. And then what I could do is if I wanted to edit the shape of this vector, select it, put it into node edit mode by pressing N on the keyboard and then I could just tweak that shape like so. And then what I could do is just click into the white space, right click to go into selection mode, select that vector, say use selection, select my cross section, and I could simply go ahead and press apply to create my new shape. Now whilst we can still see the component is yellow in the 2D view, I could use the option here to clear the rails and it will also clear that component as well. So now what I'd like to do is just undo all of the changes that I've made to these vectors. So let's go to edit, use the option to undo or I could use the sh keyboard shortcut which is Control and Z. I'm just going to undo that and then I'm going to use Control and Z until we get back to our original state. So so far we've looked at open rails. We can also look at extruding shapes along closed vectors as well. So let's take this rectangle shape here, use the option to use selection. I'm going to apply this curved cross section, use the option here, apply, and you'll see that we've got 
this rectangular shape with the curved profile that we selected there. So you'll notice that we have nice mitered corners in this shape that we have here. And that's because we've got this option, Create Square Corners, selected. And so what that does, it creates a mitered corner at each 90 degree bend. Now if we use the option to uncheck that, and then if we applied that new shape, you'll see now that we've got radius edges. So let's put that back to Create Square Corners and press Apply. Now in the open rail example we saw how we could add multiple cross sections to an open rail. Now let's have a look at how we can add multiple cross sections to a closed rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cross section I'm actually going to apply that to that start point there. I'm going to right click, use the option add to all rail nodes, press apply and you'll see that the shape is exactly the same as it was before except now we could look at changing some of these cross sections. So I'm going to take this cross section here and we're going to apply it to the top corner there. Go ahead and press apply. And you can see how that shape has changed and how it's transitioning into the next cross section. And I could even take that cross section, move it down, and then I could go ahead and press apply there. One thing that I can't easily replace, and that's the cross section that's at the start point, which is this one here. And that's because when we create a closed vector rail, the start and end points are the same. So if I wanted to change this to a different cross section, the only way that I could do that is by clearing the rails and then reselecting the vectors that I wanted to use instead. And so that's a good thing to remember if you want to change the cross section on a start point of a closed rail. So let's just use the option here to clear the rails. So now let's have a look at this oval shape. I'm going to select it, use the option Use Selection. Next I need to apply my cross section. In this case we're going to use this vector here. And I'm just going to apply that directly to the node and I can do that just by clicking on it. We can see that there's a check mark there and I can roughly see how this is going to sweep around in the 2D view. So let's go ahead and press apply. When we press apply I can see the result of my selection here in the 3D view. I can see which side of my cross section this is being hung from, which is this side here, the left side the one with the red node on, and we can see at that point of our cross section is being hung from this point here, indicated by this red square here. And so we can see the result of that here in the 3D view. If I wanted to change that around so that this long slopey area is actually on the outside of the shape, we could simply just reverse the rail. To do that, right click over the rail, use the option Reverse Rail. You can see now that the indicator is now on the inside here. And if I go ahead and press Apply, you'll see that the shape has now changed. And we can see that this side of our cross section is now on the inside. And then the slope down is on the outside there. So let's just put that back in Z. If I right click over the rail, You'll see not only can I reverse the rail, but we also have the option here to insert start point. That will just simply input a node and make that the start point. Another thing I can do is if I hover over various points, it will find it will tell me if we've got a node in place. So you see we've got the node symbol there. So if I move away, I can no longer see it. If I hover back over, you'll see there's a node symbol there. It's telling me that we're over a node and I can click and it's just going to input that cross section on that node. And do that again. Okay, so there's my node icon. I can click to input the cross section. If I wanted to change that cross section, simply come over, select this curved shape here, select that node there, and you'll see now that the indicator is now yellow, and that's just telling us that we are now referring to this cross section here, which is also indicated by this yellow node there. Again, we could find the last one here, you can see that node symbol, I can click to input that curved shape, 
and I could go ahead and press apply and it will update that in the 3D view according to the selection that we have here and so you can see that there's lots of ways for us to control the shapes that we're creating when using the extrude tool and the right mouse click menus. So far we've looked at how we can extrude vectors along our rails. Also we have the ability to extrude components as well. So let's just use the option to clear the rails. I'm going to close the extrude form down. I'm going to come over into the modeling tools. I'm going to use the option to import a component or a 3D model. I'm going to import the grape leaf from the project folder. I'm going to use the option to open that. If that's selected, let's just align that to the center of our material. And then with that selected, we're going to size it. So we're going to change the height of this so that it's 1.5 keep link XY checked so that it all scales in proportion press apply and then we can close that down if that's selected we're going to come over and we're going to rotate that and rotate it about its own center point here I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and it'll become apparent as to why I've done this in a moment so let's just close that down and then we're going to go back into the extrude form and then we're going to select this vector here and then say use selection and so for the cross sections this time we don't want to use a vector cross section but we'd like to use a component in this case okay so to select your component you have to use this drop down menu we only have one component in our job so it's only picking up the one component that we've got there it's important to note here that you can't select your component in the 2D view neither can you do that in the 3D view you can only access the components using this drop down list that we have here Okay, for the time being we're going to use this option to fill with multiple copies with a 0% overlap Let's go ahead and press apply. And so what the software's done, we've extruded copies of this leaf along the S curve that we had selected here. And the reason that we rotated that leaf earlier is so that's how the software will look at it in order for it to orientate it along this curve. So it looks at the component from left to right and that's the direction that it will flow along the rail. And so with that 0% overlap it basically means that when we filled this rail with multiple copies none of them are going to overlap where one leaf ends a new leaf begins. Now if we wanted each of these leaves to have an overlap we could just use this slider bar here for example we could increase the overlap to 30% use the option here to apply that and you'll see now that the leaves are now blending into each other we just take a closer look by zooming in there you see that they're now blending into one another now a real handy thing to do here with an overlap is to maybe look at applying a tilt to the actual leaf itself so we can see the definition of the actual uh, silhouette of the leaf through this extrusion. So let's just put that in C. I'm just going to clear the rails here. I'm just going to close this down to come out of the form. Then to apply the tilt you simply select the component, go into the properties form use the tilt option to check that box then we need to set our anchor point so we want to go from left to right so my first anchor point is going to be on the left hand side see I'm now dragging out that dotted line so this is the direction that we want to apply the tilt and so my next step here would be to click in the position that I want to apply that tilt so we're just going simple left to right I'm going to click to input that in place and then we need to apply an angle here, let's just bring that up Okay. so at the moment that's at 6.2, let's try 5 press spacebar to enter that in so you can see we've just applied a tilt to the right hand side so just lifting up the right hand side here so let's just put that in C and we're just going to close that down I'm going to go back into the extrude tool so let's select that S curve, use selection then we're going to use a component here and we're going to use the fill multiple copies at 30% we're 
but now that we've got the added tilt we can press apply to see how that looks okay so you can see that looks a lot better we can actually see the outline of the right hand side of our leaves and that's all because we applied a tilt so the right hand side of each one of these leaves is lifted up and is now over the left hand side of the leaf in front and so that's why we can see the actual outline there if we wanted to we could reduce that overlap let's say 20 percent press apply okay so you can see that uh, again all the different options here by increasing or decreasing the overlap between the leaves. If we wanted to, we could look at this option here to flip alternate copy. So if that checked, we could go ahead and press apply. And so we can see there that every other leaf has been flipped there. To see this a little better, let's just close this down. And I'm just going to take that newly created component. We're just going to delete it. I'm going to take this grape leaf, put it into transform mode and I'm just going to use one of the handles here. I'm just going to rotate it around to around 4, 5 o'clock position there. And then let's just go back into the extrude tool. So let's select this S-curve, use selection, I'm going to use a component, same settings, press apply and we should be able to see the flip alternate copies a little better in this example. So you can see that we've got this leaf pointing left, next is pointing right, left, right and so on. So let's just clear the rails there and now we're going to look at closed shapes. So let's just select this rectangle here. I'm going to use the option use selection. Again we're going to use that component. This time we're going to uncheck flip alternate copies and we're just going to go ahead and press apply and so we can see that the shape is actually quite distorted now not all shapes or components will give you good results so let's just use the option here to clear the rails and this time we're going to look at selecting this oval vector okay so we're going to use that one use selection again we're going to go the same component same settings press apply We'll see how that looks. Okay, so you can see that we've got a much nicer shape here, and that's because we're extruding along a smooth shape. Okay, so we've got a nice smooth shape there, and so the smoother the shape, we get less distortion, as we can see here in the 3D view. If I wanted to, I could use this option here to flip alternate copies, and then we could go ahead and press apply to see the result of that. You'll see we've got quite a nice composition there. And this really is a very powerful function. Now we can extrude along multiple rails and we're going to talk about that next. So let's just close that form down. And so we can see in the component tree we've got a new component added there. That's that new shape that we've just created. It's worth noting that it is one individual component doesn't contain individual leaves that we can access individually. So let's just go to file close. Okay, we're not going to save that Then we're going to open an existing file from the project folder we're going to open the weave example and go ahead and press open there. So you can see here that we now have a different set of vectors to demonstrate the extrude and weave tool. So let's just tile our windows. I'm going to go into the modeling tab, into the extrude tool. First thing we need to select are our vectors for our drive rails. In this case, I'm going to select all of these by simply just box selecting them like so. You can see they're selected because they're all highlighted. And then I could go ahead and use the option here to use selection to change those vectors into drive rails. So now we're going to apply this rectangular cross section to each one of these rails. Simply select it and then go ahead and press apply. We can see how that parts look in there in the 3D view. Now this is what we'd expect to see from everything that we've learned already. However, where the rails actually overlap each other, we can get the software to create a weave effect where it raises the shape up and down at the crossings. 
And so to do that, we simply just check this option here to weave under, over at crossings. And so we're going to use this option to scale the shape. So for Z under, I'm just going to change this value. We're going to make that 100%. Z over is also going to be 100% there. And then we could go ahead and press apply. Now you can see there is no difference. And that's because we're scaling both the Z under and over at 100% of its current height, no matter whether it's overlapping. Now we want to create the look of the part going under and over at each one of these crossings that we have here. So now let's change the Z under to be 50% its original height. So changing Z under to 50%, we're going to leave Z over at 100%. And so what we're doing is we're just reducing the height of the cross section by 50%, so it's going to be half of its original height. So when we go ahead and press apply, we can see how that's happening there. So you can see we've got the 100% and then as it goes under, it's coming under and the height of that area is being changed and it's now half the height it was originally and that's what creates this weave effect. So let's just put that Z under back to 100. We could go ahead and press apply. And so you can see that it's now back to how it was before. This time let's change the Z over value. So we're going to make that 150%. And so what we're doing here is where the Z is going to go over, we're just increasing the height by 50% its original height. So when we go ahead and press apply, we can see that the height at the crossings has been increased 50% more than its original height. Now let's change the Z under to 50% and then we could go ahead and press apply and you'll see now that the changes are a bit more prominent so we can see that weave more clearly. We've got that 50% increase going over and we've got the 50% decrease going underneath here. And so we can really see the prominence in that weave there. Let's have a look at this cross section here. So we're going to take the rounded cross section, go ahead and press apply. And we can see that this cross section with the current settings that we have here, the shape isn't quite clearing itself and is blending into each other. And so to create a weave effect, we need to dramatically change some of the values that we've got here. For example, Z under, we could make that 30%. Z over, we could make that 170. And when we go ahead and press apply, we can see now that those shapes are clearing each other a lot better than the settings that we used earlier. So now let's have a look at this ridge shape here. So we're going to select that, same settings, I'm just going to go ahead and press apply there. So let's take a look in the 3D view. Okay, so you can see uh, that where the part is going underneath, we're really squashing that shape down. And where it goes over, we're raising that up quite high and so we're really losing the consistency with the actual shape itself. And so rather than use the scale shape option, what we could look at using is adding a base. And so this is where we raise the part by adding material underneath at those crossings. So let's use the add base option. So for Z under we're going to go with 0% and for Z over we're going to go with 100%. And so the 100% is just a vertical edge that we're going to apply there. So let's just go ahead and press apply. Okay, so we can take a look at that. So you can see now that the actual shape of the part is remaining consistent and all we're doing is adding in the vertical height as a base height at those crossings where it goes over. So you can see that looks a lot better with more pleasing results than what we had where we used the scale shape option.
And so this option will give us more Z height than using the scale shape option. And it's just about choosing the right option that's best suited for the part that you are creating. You can switch between add base to scale shape and you'll notice that it remembers the last settings that you used previously. Now even though we're in the weave section, we can access other parts of the form. For example, if I wanted to, I could assign this cross section to all of those rails and you'll see that they are now all assigned like so. And then if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and I could simply put in different shapes. For example, we could take this rounded shape and I want to apply that to this point here and this point here. And then I could take the rectangular shape also and I could select that and apply that to this node here, this node here. Again, we've got those coloured indicators telling us which cross section we're using per rail and we're also seeing where it's hung from and if we go ahead and press apply we can see those changes have been made there. I can also look at applying cross sections to parts of the rail like we saw earlier for example I could take this cross section here and I could just apply that to the centre of this rail here go ahead and press apply and we can see how this rail is transitioning from the rounded shape into that ridged shape back out into that rounded shape all whilst it's still being woven into the other shapes that we've got here. And so this is a really powerful function here where we can weave shapes and extrude them at the same time. So let's just close this down and we're going to take that component, I'm just going to right click and we're just going to delete that. So the order that the shapes are woven in, as in which parts go up and down, we can control this by reversing the first drive rail that you select. So select a single drive rail to begin with, so we're going to take this one here and then I'm just going to select the other vectors here. So remember this is the one that we've selected first. We're going to go into the extrude tool, use the option to use selection. We're just going to apply this ridge shape here. We could go ahead and press apply and we can see how everything's being woven there. So we can see that we're coming in at the bottom, we're going over and then it's going underneath at the base over here. And if we wanted to reverse that so it's under here and it's over at this end, what we do is we simply take the first rail that we selected and if we right mouse click we could use the option here to reverse the rail. So we can see it's reversed that and then when we go ahead and press apply now you'll see it's now swapped that over, it's now over here and under at the bottom. And so it looks at the first drive rail as a basis for us to control all of the other rails. So let's just close that form down and we'll take that component and we're just going to hit the delete key on the keyboard. So let's just go to the layers, switch off simple weave, switch on the circle weave, make it the active layer and you'll see we've got a set of circles. So we created one circle, use the mirror about job center option to create the other copies there. So let's just select all of these. I'm going to go into the extrude tool, say use selection, I'm going to select that ridge shape, go ahead and press apply. So you can see it's remembered the last settings that we used here in the weave option and we've created a rather nice complex looking part there. So let's just close that down. And we're just going to take that component, we're just going to delete it using the delete key. And so rather than using vectors, we can use components to extrude. So let's just go over to import a 3D model. I'm going to import this weave group, open that, and if we just take a closer look, you'll see we've got this flower shape on top of this extruded shape that we've got there. Just put that back in Z. So now we can go into the extrude tool 
and we're going to select all of those circles using shift and then selecting them going to use the option to use selection to turn them all into drive rails this time we're going to use a component remember it picks that component up from this drop down list and this time we're going to go and fill with multiple copies we're going to have a 10% overlap we're going to uncheck flip alternate copies I'm just going to go with the same weave settings that we've got here and then we could go ahead and press apply Okay. and so if we take a look at that you can see we've got a really nice weave there if we zoom in we can see that we've got a seamless part because of that 10% overlap if we just put that in ISO we could look at increasing that overlap let's say 40% this time press apply again if we zoom in you can see that we have even more of a complex shape here and all we've done is altered a few settings within the form. So now we're going to look at how we can use this option here to stretch to drive rail length. So let's just close this form down and then we're going to take that component that we've just created, delete it using the delete key and we're also going to delete the weave group then we're going to go to our layers tab, switch off the circle weave switch on stretch weave and make that the active layer so now we're going to come over and import a component, I'm going to bring this paintbrush in press open, I'm just going to rotate that about its center point by 90 degrees and press apply close that down, I'm just going to take that and just move that to the top of the job there to change the size of that, so we're going to give that a width of 8 inches, link XY's checks so it scales in proportion, press apply, and then we can close that down. So let's go into the extrude tool and we're going to select this vector here, so just one. I'm going to say use selection, we're going to use a component, you'll see it's picked up that paintbrush there and then this time we're going to use the option to stretch to drive rail length and then we could just go ahead here and press apply Okay, and you'll see what it's done there it's basically stretched that component and distorted it along the curve of this rail and this will work with any open or closed rails so let's just put that in ISO and we're just going to reset that so then we're going to clear the rails and this time we're going to select both of those vectors use selection, we're going to use that component, we're going to stretch to the drive rail length we're also going to look at using the option to weave under and over at this intersection here rather than use add base we're going to use the scale shape option we're going to scale this at Z under at 50, Z over at 150, press apply to see how that looks. Okay, so you can see that both of those paintbrushes have been stretched along each one of those rails. We also have the weave effect in the center there. If I wanted to, I could increase the Z under to 75%, press apply, and I think we've got a much better result there so this really is a powerful tool to get components to follow a line and weave at the same time so let's just close that down and you'll see that we now have just one component that represents the two brushes being stretched along the rails that we just created earlier and so that completes this guide on how to use the extrude and weave tool and you'll see examples of this tool being used in actual project tutorials where these can be found in the related videos section for this tutorial.